Hi, my name is George Politis and I am going to paint uh, an entrance of uh, a house, of a courtyard in Sandorini, in a beautiful island in Greece. The colors I will be using are from the Daniel Smith range of watercolors and as my ochres I will be using Queen Acridon Gold, one of my most favorite colors, Mars Yellow and uh, Burnt Sienna Light. In terms of blues, which is an essential color in Sandorini, I will be using Cerulean Blue, Indian Throne Blue and Lunar Blue. And um, for Green, I will be using uh, Cascade Green. And finally, from the Primatec series, two colors I love so much, Bloodstone Genuine and Moon Glow. Um, as about my brushes, I will be using Versatile Escoda brushes. I like to use the travel set as it is very easy to travel around, use them wherever you go, even in the studio. So. Let's get started. Clear water first in the sky and then I apply cerulean blue. The block I'm using is tilted. So I'm using gravity. removing the excess water and we're done with the sky from the beginning now imagine a wall uh, we, we have some kind of uh, a ruined wall and then the light comes from the right as I see it so we expect some shadow here and shadow here and uh, some uh, stones and things like that in the floor, a blue door. This is the overall image. So let's go 
Tu sigue. Wall. To establish some of the darks here. And uh, I will be using some bloodstone and some moon glow for that. And I will repeat the color of the sky, which is cerulean in this area so let's start with some bloodstone tilt it because like that you see the beauties of this primatex series and then some moon glow As I go towards the ground, I add some ochres. This is Queen Acridon. Cerulean gives some light in the shadow along with the ochres and then a final touch of the darker colors which add texture to the wall so I'm adding once again these two beautiful colors that is moon glow and bloodstone removing excess water and now i'm dragging some of this color the ground some burnt sienna some earth colors here too okay and uh, later I will add a little bit of shadow to this direction as well okay so that's it with the wall while it is still wet i can add some earthy colors to the earth so a little bit of barren sienna and some queen acridon gold here and here So, what next? I can go to the area of the wall and suggest some colors, mostly reflected colors. Very, very light.
What is beautiful about Santorini is that you have those amazing uh, blues next to white colors. Of course, you cannot uh, leave everything white. I mean, when you paint the white of the paper, because even in the white you see colors, and it's essential to see or invent colors within the white color. So this is how I apply this idea here. Normally towards the earth you expect some more occurs from the reflected light and reflected colors from the ground. So that's it for the moment. And then I can move to another area probably I have to wait because right now it is a little bit wet and dangerous so an area that is not dangerous is the area of the door I'm starting with cerulean, but now I apply Indon Throne Blue. Another beautiful, intense blue that gives excellent results when it comes to the colors of Sandorini. Turning the paper so that I have better control over the edges. And while it is still wet, I will add some darker colors on top to create some more nuances of blue and purplish or reddish colors. And this is done by using Moon Glow. I will go to this area, which is some buildings at the back, so we expect them to be grayed down and mostly in the blue or bluish gray colors, so I'm applying a grayish colors, color where I'm using Lunar blue. That's it. Let's start now with um, the greens up there and I'm using some Mars yellow. to suggest the warm yellow colors of leaves reflecting the light and then at the second stage I will be adding cascade green from now I can start giving some suggestions of green and I can build up as I go. I'm painting positively and negatively in order to achieve that.
some successors, nothing definite, some suggestions of leaves. Okay. That's enough for that. At this point, I can. Oh, I forgot that. We have a piece of wood here, and it's never too late to correct minor things like that. So I'll be using some uh, Queen Acridon and Burnt Sienna in order to suggest this wood. And when it comes closer to the leaves, when, where you expect some shadows, I'll be adding the first layer of uh, Moon Glow. This will be used further in later stages to suggest the shadows. I'm going in there. So again, the colors you see here are Queen Acridon Gold, Burnt Sienna, and some Moonglow. I'll take a couple of moments as this has to dry to show that in my painting career I have been crazy for miniatures so uh, these are not some of my smallest miniatures but I loved painting miniatures I don't have the smallest smallest ones that are compatible to uh, you know one euro size but uh, the kind of detail and the uh, way that you have to get into the picture to see the details and paint things like that in small, I mean really small miniatures, makes you makes you very very connected to the subject you are painting, and this is what I love about miniature painting. Okay, we are back and we can paint. This area, which is like the ruined part of the wall, and I will not overdo it, I will just suggest some color beyond the whites, and I have to keep everything quite transparent because it will be required for later stages. So I'm using some moon glow and some of the blues that I have used up till now. You can see that it is still very transparent as a layer. Some burnt sienna too. As I go towards the edges, I add some moon glow, which diffuses and gives some beautiful nuances, beautiful colors.
more careful towards the edges varying colors and mixing colors on the paper directly as you see I don't have a picture for that, I only sketched from uh, uh, a sketch that I had done in uh, Sandorini, very rough sketch. The light was not like that, so I'm interpreting the light in the way, in the way I want. Okay, this is important too for me. Let's go to this beautiful decoration. Things like that you find in a lot of places in Sandorini. I might use some Venetian red too. And for the shadow part, I will be using for texture some bloodstone with indanthrone, which produces a very, very intense and colorful dark. And what is most important for me, a dark that gives granulation which means it gives texture to the final area Okay, that's good. That's enough. Let's go now and paint some more shadow down there. must decide for some kind of metallic color for this later and uh, now let's go to the stairs and probably paint a little bit here on the ground and we have to do this shadow some texture here these are some of the next things that I have to concentrate to so perhaps I can start with texture you see these are very good brushes and you can do several things with them. So I'm 
suggesting with very very pale pale color texture for these for these stones or whatever they can be very little water and just suggestion of things Mostly like dry brushing. Okay. Let's get some of the used colors on the palette. to suggest the three-dimensional stairs. So actually this is not the color that I'm interested in here, mostly the value to shape and block in the various elements. it never hurts to add a little bit of texture as I said I always mix on the paper and I turn the paper to have better control of the edges Let's move to the other one, water first, and then repeating more or less the same colors, the same effects. Let's use some Bernciana too. The choice of colors is always a decision of the moment I don't care so much about the actual colors as I do about the uh, the values if the values are okay then the colors are not so important if the values are not okay then the colors cannot save you the number of the house this is totally invented that was not in the picture it was not at the house so it was not in my sketch either but I thought it would give some interest to the painting here in so many cases I invent things, shapes, I add them, in many cases I eliminate them.
also if you ever want to send them a letter you know that the number is number 17 we don't know the name of the road but it doesn't matter this is number 17 and then I will always tone this down as I don't want this to be one of the key elements I just added the color so I'm using some water and I'm toning, toning everything down let's invent some small shadows here and here and here and then where you have the marble or whatever this is at the door you expect to have some nuances and things like that and even if they are not there it is useful for me in order to show the marble in negative so even if they are not there they are important I add them You see how much this adds to the feel of the marble just painting in negative. There too. foreground and continue with the shadows one more layer for the shadow especially towards the edges and then don't need too much information inside but the edges are more important and now I have to go and suggest a shadow from the wall on the other wall, on the other piece of the wall. And as you see, we are doing this on top of a more or less white, or white is, let's say, wall, so I'm keeping this area a little bit lighter. else uh, at some point I have to define stones on the ground here I feel that the values are really close and it should not be like that I have to bring this piece of the wall forward so I'm introducing some more I'm putting in some more Indan throne and moon Munglo at the back which makes this part of the wall pop out and come forward probably some texture too why not this is just a shape it is not something important that will give any essential detail to the final painting it is just serving as a negative volume what else I should leave this for later but for the moment I can suggest that here we have the part of the wall in uh, 
perspective and um, let's move here let's move to the greens and I'll be using some cascade green to save up some more leaves so I'm painting around leaves creating some positive and negative shapes variety of colors here negative shapes around several things so we get the feeling of several leaves in here we must have resting areas so don't put too much detail in every place of course I'm not painting the real leaves you know it's just the idea of leaves so it's a it's actually a symbol of leaves and this means that I will not go into detail. I'm not thinking too much of uh, real leaves as long as I get the idea of them. I think it's enough need to push things too much here perhaps later when I see it after that 
I might think of any more details to add. So let's go to the front again, once again, and let's put some details. So when you are able to put details in the shadow, it means that your shadow is quite transparent, which is good for watercolor. If you are not able to paint details in the shadow, then your shadow is probably uh, too thick, too opaque. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but probably you don't want that. So I like when I can paint some uh, details in there, and then I can suggest some of the stones you find in uh, Sandorini in their courtyards decorative things beautiful things small and blue and uh, and big and if you ever go to Sandorini remember these are so beautiful to find where you walk in the small roads where you find the donkeys that are so beautiful for the tourists. Although I don't like the abuse of the donkeys, to tell you the truth, but anyway, that's another thing. I just suggested some of these stones, no more than that, it's already enough. Alright, then in order to uh, go forward, let's suggest some shadows in the cracks of the wall here and there. Some of the used colors, once again. or add some more cracks this could be possible here and here suggest don't overdo that's good then I can protect some of this area and I can take toothbrush, I can take some color and add some more texture here. And not too much. That's enough. It's interesting to do all of that, but remember, don't overdo it. Actually, I'm toning down some of them so that they are better incorporated to the painting. Okay. Good. Let's put some more shadow towards this area. It's not actually the shadow that I'm interested in, it's making this pop out against the sky so it's what I was talking about the positive and negative shapes put some blue because we have so much blue around that it's normal to have blue reflected from everything and
clean then what about some metal up here probably a little bit rusty metal so I'm using quinacridone quinacridone oak quinacridone rose and some uh, Venetian red good no more than that and uh, you know it's just a sketch it's not a painting so I can finalize and finish this by putting one more layer of blues here that will start with a darker blue and finish lighter so let's take some Indom Throne and Moon Glow for the area to the left and make this color fade out to from the right as I see it here to the left but as I turn it is the opposite way Yes, it is okay now. I'm taking some of the excess water that comes down there. And I think it can be considered as done more or less. Of course, as I always say, you can keep painting that for ages and adding more details and adding more, more things. And as long as you are thinking about that, you will find things, but this is just a demo. It's not an exhibition piece. So I guess it is okay. So I can probably sign it and I have to thank Victoria Grigorieva for the invitation it has been a great pleasure and I'm very very honored that I have been invited to exhibit and do a demo I have the best memories from uh, Kiev and Ukraine from last year so uh, 
I don't see the time to go back and meet everybody there. So greetings to all, to Kiev and uh, Ukraine. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, my friends. This is it.